Myopia is caused by the growth of the eyeball. When we are born, the eyeball is about 16 to 18 millimeters long. And in an adult who is normal sighted, the eyeball is about 24 millimeters long. So during the first few years of life, it is normal for eyes to grow. And at some stage, there are stop signals which stop the eyeball from growing further. In children with myopia, those stop signals have been ignored and the eyeball becomes a little bit longer than it's meant to be. And that causes the image that the eyes form to fall in front of the retina at the back of the eye. The causes for this are both genetic, so it is a condition that runs in families, and environmental. We know that something must have changed in the visual environment of children these days because myopia has doubled over the past 50 years in the UK, meaning that now about 10% of 10 to 12 year olds and 25% of teenagers have myopia. So something in the environment must have changed. And we think that the main reasons for myopia becoming so much more common these days are that children spend less time outdoors, have less exposure to sunlight, and also spend a lot more time on near focus activities. So reading books, looking at screens, both for school and for leisure, using smartphones, for example, to communicate with their friends outside school. So it seems to be the combination of a lack of outdoors activities and increased near focus work. We often wonder what it is that drives myopia progression. Why does it get worse year on year? And there are two factors. So there are the external factors, again, near focus work, reading a lot, spending hours and hours on studying and on devices for fun. And also that it is normal for the body um, of the young child and teenager to still grow taller. So there is a raised level of growth hormones and somehow these two factors, the external factors, the stimulating eye growth and the readiness of the body to promote growth combine. And the result is that year on year, the prescription gets a bit bigger. Genetic factors also play a very important part. Often in my consultation, I have a whole family where the grandparents have had myopia from a young age and then have suffered late complications such as myopic macular degeneration, which can lead to a loss of central vision in older age. Or they develop glaucoma because the pressure inside the eyes, although it is normal, compresses the nerve fibers at the back of the eye, which are more vulnerable in people who are short-sighted because they are stretched because the eyeballs are a bit longer than they should be. And the parent generation often have had LASIK or other laser assisted procedures to correct for their short sightedness. So the adults in the room know all about myopia and how it has affected their life and their quality of life. And the children are often just at the beginning of the journey have just found out that they should wear glasses to see better in the distance. So it is definitely a condition that runs in families, but also very frequently these days, the child is the first person in the family to have short sightedness. Both parents have absolutely normal vision, but the child, probably because our visual environment has changed, is then the first person in the family to need glasses. All over the world, young people are a lot more prone to develop myopia these days than they were a couple of generations ago. In the UK, for example, we know that over the past 50 years, myopia has become twice as common as it used to be. And now children aged 10 to 12 years have a risk of about 10% of developing short-sightedness. In teenagers aged 15 to 16 years, um, myopia affects 25% of them. And that figure then remains stable. So across Western Europe, about 25% of young adults have myopia.
in East Asia, there have been very interesting trials in um, schools where they asked children of primary school age who were not yet short sighted to spend the last lesson of the day outdoors and also to spend the break time at school outdoors. And from these trials, we have learned that spending more time outside, having more exposure to sunlight will slow the onset of short sightedness. So yes, for young children, if you can take them outside to the park, maybe for an hour and a half a day, that will definitely be beneficial for them. Outdoors activity also encourage healthy growth and social development for the whole child. So it is always a good idea to balance activities indoors with some activities and team sports that take place outside. <laughs> 